my name is Ben Murdin and I'm a professor of physics at the University of Surrey uh, and I initiated this research along with colleagues at University College London. The research is about how do you manipulate atoms on the surface of a silicon chip and then how do you use them, it, and how do you utilize the fact that atoms can be in two states at once, uh, a property of quantum physics and small scale things, how can you use them for something practical? Many people have been working on this for a long time and talking about the possibility of a quantum computer. Uh, a quantum computer is a device which um, some people have demonstrated on a small scale, uh, but nobody's been able to scale up to, to, to make a, a really big and powerful computer. So um, the idea is that you have uh, a computer where instead of having the information encoded in zeros and ones, the computer will have the information encoded in both zeros and ones at the same time, and it makes it more powerful. I, I guess imagine what you could do if you could be in two places at once and do two different jobs at once. The information in the quantum computer will do two jobs at once or multiple jobs at once. It just makes it more powerful. And the fact that we demonstrated this ability of atoms in a silicon chip to be in two places at once means that we'll be able to use all of the powerful uh, silicon microprocessing industry to bring to bear on expanding up from just one or two atoms to millions and millions of atoms to make a real practical quantum computer. Um, because of the fact that the idea of quantum computing is relatively young and it, it, there are very few practical examples of, uh, of, of existing quantum computers, um, people have not spent an awful lot of time in thinking about what you might do with one. So there are some examples that, um, um, that are, are uh, that, that are well known. One of which is uh, cracking codes. Uh, you may, uh, if you're, if you're uh, a government, you might be interested in being able to um, see what uh, secrets terrorists are trying to send around. Or if you're an individual member of the public, you might be interested in being able to make uncrackable codes so that you can send your bank information between you when you're uh, in an internet cafe and your bank. So codes are very important and being able to make uncrackable codes or to be able to crack codes is, a, is, a, is, a, is an important uh, application of quantum computers. So the research is interesting from uh, a number of different points of view. One is the application eventually to quantum computing, um, but um, I suppose that I'm most interested in it myself because of the idea of understanding more about chemistry. The fact that we are able to put atoms exactly where we want in a silicon chip and m m build up molecules so we can put two atoms next to each other with a controllable separation and trap them there forever, or three atoms next to each other. They, th those atoms effectively f look like a, a little molecule that we've trapped in space. So we can now understand quantum chemistry uh, in a, a little laboratory, which we would not be able to create in, in nature, because nature gives you let's say a hydrogen molecule with a certain distance between the hydrogen atoms and what you get is what nature wants you to have. But here we have control, so there's a whole new science we can, we can produce. Now, on a technological level, we're also building new techniques. The laser technique that I mentioned uh, is going to enable us to do all kinds of new studies, uh, including things like uh, uh, studies of, um, of biomolecule motion, which is important for understanding how molecules move around in cells and how drugs interact with, 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 mole with uh, molecules inside your body. So there's lots of technological benefits as well as the, uh, as the science and, and also the potential quantum computer.